Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to make some Christmas tree decorations. And these are really simple to make and they're slightly different from my normal crochet videos because they're actually made from felt. But in this video I'm going to show you how to make this little Christmas pudding one uh, which has the crocheted holly leaves as well. But the method for making them are all the same um, for the robin and for the gingerbread man who currently doesn't have any eyes at the moment because I'm going to sew those on. Um, but the method is exactly the same. So all you're going to need to make any of these is three different coloured colours of felt. I've chosen some dark brown felt, um, some white felt and some red felt. You're also going to need some, for this one, if you're going to make these ones, you're going to need some green yarn. And I've just got a DK light worsted weight dark green yarn and also a little red button for the berries. So I've just got a selection of different pink and red buttons to choose from. Also going to need some red DK light worsted weight yarn for sewing your little decorations together and also going to need some scissors and a yarn needle. You're going to need some toy stuffing as well and you're also going to need some PVA glue and I've just used this tacky PVA glue which you can get from most um, most uh, craft stores. Okay so let's begin. Oh and you're also going to need some ribbon as well and you can use any type of ribbon. I've chosen some sparkly quite thin ribbon, quite Christmassy and I've got some gold ribbon here but you can also choose any type of ribbon I've also got some festive Christmassy ribbon here as well okay so let's begin okay so the first thing you want to do is to cut out your shapes that you're going to be using now I recommend if you're going to be making the gingerbread man or the robin I recommend cutting out some shapes out of cardboard first and um, so you can get the shape that you want and then using these as templates onto your felt to cut around as for the, we're going to be making the Christmas pudding, I've just simply chosen, I've just simply cut out some basic sort of Christmas pudding circle shapes and um, yeah, and you need two, two shapes because we're going to be sewing these together. So the first thing to do is to cut out your shapes and also cut out for each Christmas decoration two pieces of the white for the Christmas pudding. So here's some I cut out earlier. So I'm making a few of these. So I've got two icing pieces, as it were, to go either side of my Christmas pudding. For the robin, you need to cut out a shape like this for the white. So the white goes onto the brown first. So I've cut out a few of these shapes, like so. Two, again, two for each decoration. And I've also made some smaller shapes, sort of long oval shapes in red as well just to go on top. They're quite an abstract style robin. And for the gingerbread man, without any eyes at the moment, <laughs> I've just cut out a little bow shape in the red and some white buttons and I'm going to sew on some eyes just like I have for the robin there with some black yarn. So you might also need some black yarn if you're making, if you want to sew some eyes. Okay, so once you've got your two pieces for each decoration made up. So for this Christmas pudding we just need the white icing and the Christmas pudding shape. You want to put them together so make sure they're nice and evenly put together like so and then you want to thread some of this red DK wool onto a yarn needle and you want to take good length for sewing I'm going to thread some of that onto a yarn needle like so and then you want to start sewing your decoration together just like I have here for the robin and to do that I'm going to start at the bottom about here and you just literally very roughly very handmade looking sew some stitches just literally going along the edge making sure just to sew over the top I like this so you just continue that around because the the advantage of this pattern this style is we want it to look handmade 
so you don't need to worry about it looking too neat and professional because we want it to look homemade creates that sort of vintage homemade look so we're just going to continue that round to the top and then we're going to stop at the top because then we're going to get our ribbon and we're going to sew that in to the top so I'm just going to carry on sewing up to the top and then I'll come back Okay, so when you finish sewing up to the top, we want to stop there. Then we want to get some of our ribbon, and for this one, I'm going to use some gold ribbon. And we want to take a length about that much, enough to create a loop and to be able to tie a couple of knots in the bottom. So we're going to cut a piece of ribbon, and then what we want to do is we want to tie two knots into the end. So it's one. And then two like so and then what we're going to do is we're just going to place that knot on the inside of our little Christmas pudding and just lay the felt over the top and position it into a place that you're happy with like so and then we're going to get our yarn again and we're just going to sew around this and through to sew it into place making sure the knot is just beneath our stitches on the inside I'll show you on the inside like so We're making sure to line up our felt we're just going to sew that into place and what I like to do is actually sew through the loop as well so we can still keep our stitches evenly spaced There we go. And that should the knot on the inside should prevent that coming out. And we're just going to continue sewing round back to the bottom. But what we want to do is we want to leave a gap at the bottom. So I'm just going to sew round to about there and stop. And we're going to leave a hole because we need to be able to stuff our Christmas pudding. Okay, so I'm just going to do that and then I'll come back. Okay, so I've finished sewing back down to the bottom and I've left a gap at the bottom. Because now what we want to do is just get some toy stuffing and we're going to stuff the inside of our Christmas pudding. And that's the same stage as I've got to on a robin as well. I've left a gap at the bottom after sewing both sides together in exactly the same way. Did exactly the same for the ribbon and then you just stuff our Christmas pudding. So let's get some toy stuffing. You can also use yarn scraps as well but I'm just going to use toy stuffing for these because I'm actually hopefully going to be selling these at a craft show I shall be doing soon. My first one. So I'm just going to stuff this just so that it's nicely padded but not overly stuffed. And you'll find that the um, even though the stitches are quite wide, you'll find that the stuffing doesn't come out and it is actually quite firm. It's quite a good stitch. Which actually even surprised me because I thought it'd be quite loose, but no, it actually works really well. Okay, so I'm just going to finish stuffing that and then I'll come back. Okay, so I've finished stuffing my little Christmas pudding. You can see it's not overly stuffed, it's still quite quite soft, so it's not too stuffed. And all you're going to do then is we're going to sew up the hole. Sew up the remaining gap. Like so. Still trying to keep a nice equal spacing between our stitches as best we can. I should be able to get so that should be the last stitch. So I'm going to go in at the same place where I started, and then I'm just going to come out through that next stitch so it lines up perfectly, like so. And then what you want to do is we're then going to go back through there, so making sure all our stitches still line up. And then we're just going to sew our tail ends out for the top, for the centre, making sure not to pull too tightly. Then we're going to go back in in the same place and come out any way you want on the other side, 
trying to come up between the stitches for the center again making sure not to pull too tight you should see that disappear on the inside I'm going to do that one more time making sure to go back in same place and then I'm just going to come out come back where I started I'll do coming up between the two pieces of felt and what this does is this just secures our tail end piece in we're just going to push our project down a little bit pull that a little bit tight cut it and then watch the tail end disappear on the inside like so and we're going to do it exactly the same with this other end as well hiding that on the inside in the exactly the same method and then I'm going to come back so let's make sure we go for a stitch that lines up okay so I've finished sewing in my tail ends in exactly the same way so they're all hidden on the inside now so the next thing to do is we're going to get our white pieces and I've just cut these out by hand and I use the edge of the um, actual brown part of the Christmas pud to make sure that I've got the right size for the top and then I just literally cut a couple of swirly lines underneath to make it look like icing and I've done that twice obviously these don't have to be identical just identical at the top and uh, then what you want to do is you want to glue these on with just some simple PVA glue and this works really really well this is really good for sticking it on so we're going to get some of that and we're just going to glue these on and you want to cover it quite well you want to go around all the edges and then you want to make sure you've got enough glue on the middle as well okay so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to come back okay so I've just worked out a good amount of glue onto the back of the icing and I'm just going to blend it blend it, I'm just going to make sure it's all covering the whole of the icing like so when you're happy when you're happy and you're not getting in a sticky mess <laughs> um, you want to just lift that up and then we're going to stick that onto the top making sure we stick it on the right part at the top Just like that, and then what we want to do is repeat that for the other side, and we want to leave that um, just for an hour or so, just to make sure it's completely dry. Um, because when we sew on the leaves, we want to make sure we're not going to bend this so that it comes off easily. So, I want to make sure that's really nicely stuck down with the glue. Do that for the other side, and then we're going to leave it, and we're going to come back after it's dried. Okay, so I've repeated that for the other side as well. So they're nicely glued on and I'm just going to put that to the side and let that dry and for the robin as well and this would be exactly the same stage I've glued on the white parts with the smaller parts of the white bit this shape at the top like so done that for the other side and then I've put the these small little red oval shapes the skin the smaller part at the top just glued those on top of the white and let those dry and the same for the uh, the uh, the little gingerbread man as well I've just glued on his his bow tie and his buttons as well okay so the next thing we want to make are the little holly leaves and to make those we just need to get our green yarn and I've got some DK light worsted weight dark green yarn and we're going to be using a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook and to make them all we need to do is to chain six To begin, so that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then what you want to do is you want to do a work a one single crochet in your second stitch from hook. And your second stitch is not the bit of yarn on your hook. It's not that first chain. It's your second chain down. So in there, 
making sure just to catch the top piece of yarn, the top piece of the chain, and then work your single crochet like so. Then what you want to do is you want to chain three, so that's one, two, three, and you want to work a slip stitch into the same chain that you just worked the single crochet. So you're going to go back into that same chain and work a slip stitch like so. Then what you want to do is you want to work one single crochet into the next stitch. Again just making sure to catch that top piece of yarn. So that's one single crochet in the next stitch. Then you want to work one single crochet in the next stitch as well. And now you want to chain three. So that's one, two, three. And we want to work a slip stitch into that same chain. We just worked the single crochet at the bottom. Like so. And that should leave you with two stitches, two chains left. So you want to work a single crochet in the next stitch and then a single crochet in the very last chain. Again just making sure to catch that one bit of yarn like so. And that creates two of our little ridges of our holly leaf. Now what you want to do is you want to chain three to work the third ridge and we're going to slip stitch into that same last chain we worked our single crochet and as you can see our project is now moving round and we want to work back into these foundation chains again and I've done a video in more detail on how to do this but what you want to do is our first foundation chain is exactly the same as our last chain we've just worked that slip stitch into so in the next one, the second one and because you only worked into the top piece of the yarn, it should be a little bit more easier to see those chains again. So in the second one, you want to work a single crochet. Like so. Then in the next one, you want to work a single crochet. We want to chain three to create the ridge. And then you want to slip stitch back into that same foundation chain. Let's bring that ridge down. And the last two we want, so the next one you want to work a single crochet. And then in the very last very last one, you want to work a single crochet again and you want to chain three, one, two, three and then you just want to finish up by slip stitching back into that last foundation chain. Oops. Let's try that again work that slip stitch like so and then we want to cut off our tail end and bring that up and that creates your little miniature holly leaf shape and you want to create you want to make two of those and we're going to sew them on I've already sewn this one on we're going to sew the other one on this side so I'm just going to do that and then I'll come back Okay, so I've finished sewing on the other holly leaf and all that's left to do now is to get a little red button of your choice and sew that just in between the little holly leaves and that creates the uh, effect of a little berry. So as you can see on this finished one here. And if you're making the robin, all that's left to finish is just using a little bit of black yarn to create an eye. I've just sewn a little slit either side and hidden the ends and the same for the holly as well, the ends of the holly, I've just sewn them in through the body like we did for the red yarn when we wanted to hide our tail ends on the inside. And that's it. And for the little gingerbread man, I'm just going to sew on 
some little eyes as well so he's done and there we go so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and uh, I'll see you soon for some more crafty crochet fun thanks for watching bye